macro economy is happening and the halvening is weakening in power. As the Bitcoin halvening weakens by 50% each time, right, um, there's also But they'll also want to know when Moon will it. <laughs> in Moon, well, um, moon. it moons all the time, just in different scales, right? Yeah. If you if you look at market structures, market cycles, like I say, you have been here, you have a lot of experience. Yeah, based on everything you've seen, you've experienced before, where would you say we are now? Oh. Yeah, it's. You might not want to hear this, really, as Bitcoiners. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a measure in the finance world called Sharpe Ratio, and that, that really just is measuring risk, like how um, how volatile is your returns over time? Um, like you're looking at your returns, and we love it at Moons. It's like crazy. We're going to beat every asset, but how much risk are you taking in the volatility of your returns? And Bitcoin was killing it. It beat every other asset on the planet. It, it was like, you know, three to four. That's very high. Um, now it's dropped down to around two-ish, something like that. And where we are right now is actually converging onto every other macro asset on the planet, similar to equities, similar to gold, bonds, emerging currencies. This is like all macro assets trade within the range. And Bitcoin just entered that and it dropped. And it, it wasn't like, it was like, boom, boom, step change. And that happened 2018, 2019. It was the financialization of Bitcoin. We had the perpetual swap, we had calendar futures, paperization of Bitcoin. I can sell, say if I'm the US government, and I can print, you know, I've got $20 trillion of capital out there, M2 money supply. You can make policy, you can print more money, you can incentivize particular markets. And the reality is Bitcoin's, you know, maybe half a trillion dollar asset. There's 21 million Bitcoins associated with that. <clears throat> if I print a trillion dollars, I can sell for $42 trillion Bitcoin. So this is the issue right now is we've got paperization of these markets and Bitcoin's traded like any other macro asset on the planet. And I think that's a big worry for me. We're talking about a spot ETF. Okay, we can buy up to 21 million. We're actually 1 million probably because that's what's available. But in the meantime, you've got these paper markets that have huge ability to ch control the market. Are you saying that is bad? for you as a trader, or do you think that is actually bad for the asset it, your, itself? For well, our, you know, Bitcoin's hope, right? <clears throat> How do you create hope for the world, right? When the world economy is $100 trillion, and this asset is half a trillion dollars, half a trillion dollars, say we've got El Salvador wanting to adopt it as the nation state currency. Um, if we want more people to exit the system, this pool of capital is not big enough for it to be serving larger countries. So it does need to expand. Bitcoin needs to go to the moon. We like it because we hold it, but actually for the greater good, we need this asset to get bigger. And now we've got a mechanism, not we, but the system that we're in has a mechanism to tame that down because you're competing. Like I'm back in the US dollar because I'm the US government or I don't know. I, I'm whoever it is that has an incentive for who, whatever it is, if it's the US dollars, I want the US dollars to grow for whatever reason, and I want Bitcoin to come down. Like IMF does not like El Salvador going on the Bitcoin standard. So um, it's really important Bitcoin gets bigger. And right now um, we've got a lot of headwinds. And the spot ETF is great. Maybe we can unlock demand from very liquid markets from a lot of people wanting to buy into it with some amount of capital, but it, there's a there's a there's a um, systemic problem right now because there's a the, there's a lot of headwinds, and it used to be halvening because you've got this demand coming in. It's an adoption S curve, like people are coming in at such a scale that it's pushing it up, right? And we're at a point where 
were uh, maybe in the Western world, I think it's around 15 to 20% of investors may have exposure. And then it goes like that, right? To capture this is 100%, this is 0%, you're doing this S curve. And there's that equation coming in. And then you've got this halvening that happens, which is like the miners are selling, mining, sell, 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 because this inflation is dumping on the market. And then it's where, where does it all fit in? We've always said four year halvenings and we moon after every single halvening because the sale pressure halves. But if you were to look at macroeconomics and liquidity, um, it's also on a four year cycle. And guess what? It's superimposed on the Bitcoin four year halvening. Uh, it's the government injects the world economy injects liquidity every four years. You can chart that. I, I want to go back to like the launch of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was launched at the perfect time, right? We had the world financial crisis. No one trusted the banks. The whole thing was perfect. It was like Satoshi released it post world financial apocalypse saying this is an alternative. What did the, the world economy do? What did the bankers do? Is that they had to save this economy so they injected massive amounts of capital and that four year happening their cycle is every four years there's an injection of capital I don't know why I don't know why these cycles are four years in the macro economy I know why it's in the Bitcoin because it was set programmatically but they superimpose but the key is right now is that this injection of capital in the macro economy is happening and the halvening is weakening in power. As the Bitcoin halvening weakens by 50% each time, right? Um, there's also this other dynamic inside our own industry, which is uh, the Bitcoin trading, right? We used to trade just Bitcoin, now we trade paper Bitcoin, right? So you could buy near infinite amounts of Bitcoin and that creates a huge amount of trading volume. And this amount of trading volume is is it, it, you can see it already the spot markets where you're trading the real bitcoin is very low compared to the paper markets very liquid and so let's get her away from the volume but think about what the exchanges are doing they are making a little fee on top of every single trade and that accounts for multiple billions of dollars every year and what do they do with that is they make money they sell the bitcoin so that they can pay for the infrastructure this.